Hello, in this episode, we're going to look at how to make draggable widgets in UE5. And uh, we're going to use some of UE's documentation to uh, help achieve this. So there's some nice uh, documentation from Unreal Engine uh, for how to do this. However, we're going to extend it further by making a reusable component, right? We don't want to be uh, recreating the same blueprints on every widget that we want to be um, uh, draggable. So we're going to create a, a generic component that we're going to then add to our other widgets uh, making them draggable as well so that's kind of the the purpose here so let's have a quick uh, look at the demo and um to just showcase what it is that we're trying to do so basically we're going to have a couple of windows so this will be the first one you can see if i'm uh clicking dragging and dropping it uh, the window is moving with that and then I can have a different window and you can see I've also got the same logic applied. So the key here is to create this little widget component uh, so that we don't have to repeat that same logic in other places, right? Um, so that's the demo and uh, let's get into the actual code on how to achieve this. Okay, so perhaps one of the first things that we'll look at is creating the user widget for uh, the top of the window. So this is just a, a little widget that we're going to be nest, nesting inside our other widgets, and it will effectively make those other widgets drag and drop enabled, right? So we'll put in all of our logic in here, and then we'll just add this widget into other ones, and that's how we'll uh, sort that out. Uh, in terms of like the uh, the designer here, I'm going to have a title, so I'm going to bind this uh, to a variable, so I'm going to set this title from my other um, components, and I'm also going to have a button to uh, make the widgets invisible as well, so we'll, we'll have a look at those. The key things uh, that we need to implement are inside these functions for drag and drop and on mouse button down. Uh, so perhaps we'll get started with those. So uh, maybe with the mouse button down first. And by the way, in order to create this function, what you'll have to do is click on this override button here and just find it. So you can actually type here. So on mouse button down, for instance, uh, you're not going to see it here right now. This is because I've already uh, created the override. Um, but if you haven't done it, it will be available here. And just do the same thing for the on drag detector. So that's how you go ahead and create these functions that we can then uh, implement this functionality to. And uh, what does this function actually try and do? Well, the first thing that it does is um, try and evaluate the drag offset. So uh, this was a little confusing for me to understand at the beginning, but basically uh, what it tries to capture is where is your mouse in reference to this widget when you click the button? So for example, if I click it right here, it provides me the X and Y coordinate of where I clicked from. So this is quite important because when we're actually dropping the widget, we need to provide it that offset. So what we'll actually do is uh, drop the um, widget at the point of your mouse. So it will reposition it here. And then we just need to add the X and Y coordinates for the offset. So that's what it's actually trying to do. Um, I mean, it was useful for me to understand that because I, I didn't really understand that from um, reading the Unreal Engine docs. Um, so that's evaluating the drag offset. And then what we also want to do is initiate the detection of drag. So uh, you'll have to basically grab the mouse event and tell it to detect drag if pressed. Uh, so that's it for the on mouse button down. So let's go inside the on drag detector to see what that does. So the on drag detected function will get called once and it will get called at the instance of drag being detected from, you know, the point where you started looking for it. So it's not going to be continuously uh, executing this function. It will only get called once and it will do two primary things. So the first one is um, this one over here. We're, we're going to be creating this widget drag, which is actually um, essentially this drag and drop operation. So we're going to have a look at it very shortly. Um, and this will actually deal with most of uh, this uh, drag and drop functionality. We're just really extending upon it. Uh, it allows you to specify the default drag visual. So this is what you see when you're dragging um, your mouse. And uh, that's this one over here. So this is a, the drag widget. So let's have a look at both of those as we're proceeding. So let's have a look at how to create this widget drag component. So uh, in order to create it, select um, create new blueprint. So here we want to look for drag drop operation. So select that for the parent class. Um, I'd call it something else because for me it was quite confusing between this drag widget and widget drag. 
it's not great names um, do change it I would advise you uh, so you can confirm here the parent class is drag drop operation and this is quite key because we're actually going to be reusing most functionality from the parent class um, I've created these two variables pretty much as per the UE documentation. There's actually a payload um, parameter as well available in the parent class, which you can leverage. So you don't actually have to uh, create these um, variables. You can see I've created them and made them instance editable and exposed on spawn. Uh, so that's how we populate them and then they become accessible later on as well. So this is essentially a payload for us. Um, and I'll just show you, you do have another field for the payload as well. So you could leverage that, um, but this could be a bit more explicit. You can see what it is and how to use it. So that's one advantage of having them as um, separate variables. I just want to highlight as well that it might be worth playing around uh, with the default drag visual. So you can see we've connected it to this component. So let's see what that looks like uh, again. So basically when I drag it, we can see this grayed out box. So you can see that the size of this box matches the parent widget. So that's what we've just created now. Uh, but you can make uh, the drag visual something else. So for instance, you could even connect it to the parent widget. And let's see what happens when you do that. Uh, this will simply match uh, the visual of your parent. Um, it's almost great, but we don't actually want to have the previous instance visible. The trouble here is that uh, if you do try and make it invisible, uh, the default drag will also be invisible. So there needs to be a way of creating a new instance, uh, which is just copying the appearance of the previous um, window, uh, make that invisible, and then the default drag will use a new instance uh, that matches the appearance of the old one. So um, I haven't done that yet. I'm going to have a look at this sometime in the future. But for now, um, I'm just going to use this as a template. So basically play around with it, uh, make it as you like. Um, and, and that's how you will modify the uh, drag visual anyway. So as you just saw, we got to the point where we're able to drag uh, a widget and we can move it around. And now what we need to do is create some functionality that detects the on drop operation. So uh, we want to listen to uh, an event for this drag drop operation being dropped somewhere else, right? And we're going to be handling that inside another widget. So I've just called it player canvas widget. And this is effectively like the part of the heads up display for the character. So I've just included some of the widgets. Um, this will expand later on uh, that I want the player to essentially see and interact with. So uh, this represents their entire screen. So I just want to be able to drag this widget anywhere inside the screen and drop it. So this is a good place for me to handle the on drop operation. OK, so let's have a look at how we do that. So again, uh, you can see that inside uh, this widget, we uh, override the uh, on drop operation. So we'll be able to find it by typing on drop here. Uh, click that and it will create you this function over here. So um, one thing to bear in mind is that there's uh, there's potentially different types of drag drop operations. So the one that we've created is called widget drag. So that's why you can see that I'm casting this operation to the widget drag. So if you were to have multiple different instances of drag drop operations, and it will be useful, right? Because you could be dropping an item to uh, the world space, right? And this is a different type of drag drop operation. So this is where, where it will be useful for you to cast. And if it's failed casting, then that's not your uh, primary um, operation here, right? So uh, this is quite important. And um, so when, when you've cast it, uh, you're able to uh, get the two variables that we've created. So we created widget reference and drag offset. So that's how you get access to those uh, variables. And uh, we'll do a bunch of other operations here. So let's have a look at those. But first, let's make sure we understand the purpose of this function. So uh, the main focus of it is to actually update the position of the parent widget. So what's happening is that you're clicking on your widget, you're moving your mouse, you're dragging it. And then at the point that you let go, what you want to do is then update the position of that widget to be where you've dropped your mouse, essentially, right? Where, where you let go of your mouse. 
So um, this function over here basically achieves that set position and viewport. And you can see that we're updating the parent widget, which is the widget reference, uh, to be in this new position here, right? Um, it does a couple of other things like uh, setting the visibility. So part of our drag operation, we're making our parent widget invisible. So this one basically makes sure that it's now visible again. And then part of the Unreal Engine docs, it asks you to remove from parent and add to viewport, at least at the time of making the video. I'm not actually sure, uh, I'm not sure why it requests you to do that, but I can show you that if you don't do that, uh, it's not going to work properly. So let's have a look. So I have my widget and I now drop it in new places and it doesn't actually do anything. So I'm not entirely sure why that is required here. Um, but yeah, without these two, it doesn't actually work. So do check that out. Like if you follow it, obviously you can see it's working. Um, but I'm not sure why uh, we can't just simply set the position without uh, removing it from uh, parent. So, um, okay, so now let's have a look at how we actually set the position or to what. Um, and we do that via the, the pointer event and the geometry. So the pointer event is essentially like the, the mouse event. Uh, so we're getting the screen space position of the mouse. And uh, from my geometry, we will convert this absolute to local, providing the coordinates. And that's going to be uh, essentially the return value. In terms of my geometry, um, it's essentially the geometry of this entire widget. So effectively, we have this canvas panel and it's set to be the full screen. So uh, that's kind of how it's uh, linked together. And then from our widget drag um, operation, uh, we've saved our drag offset earlier. So we're going to be uh, doing a subtraction here um, to get the final position to update. So that's our on drop operation. So the last thing I wanted to do is uh, just show you how to add this widget inside your other ones. So for instance, I'm using it inside my inventory. So I have an inventory widget, which is over here. And um, what, I, what I've done essentially is just added it um, inside to the top, right? Like you, you can add it as you like, but basically you should be able to find the movable title bar so you can call it whatever you like, and then just simply drag and drop it into your uh, widget and then style it as you like. Um, the only other thing I needed to do is make sure that I set the parent widget uh, for the movable title bar. So that's how uh, that component, so this uh, movable title bar, uh, that's how you populate this variable for the parent widget, which is used throughout, right? So just make sure that you've added that. Uh, but aside from that, I didn't actually need to add anything else. So you can see now this um, inventory component uh, is drag and drop enabled, and it doesn't need to have any particular custom uh, blueprints created here. It's simply reusing everything from this component. And this achieves that refactoring that I mentioned earlier. So I don't need to duplicate that code. So again, I'll just finish off with a quick demo um, in case you've uh, missed it earlier. So you can see that I'm dragging and dropping over here and um, all of the steps can be found on this blog post. So yeah, best of luck and uh, see you next time. Thanks.